Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Calhoun's. Calhoun's on the river, Calhoun's the marina down in Lenore City, Calhoun's all over the place. They are all over East Tennessee, but here's the thing. You can take them with you as well with their Feed 5 and Feed 10 family pack. Get that corrected right there. There we go. There, nice. Now you can carry it with you wherever you want to go. You go to the lake, you're doing a picnic, you're doing a church, uh, pick church reunion, you're doing a family reunion. Wherever you're going, let Calhoun's do the work for you. You can get all the food, all the fixings, all the utensils, plates, napkins, sauces, side items, you name it, everything. You can even get their uh, beer now to go that they brew themselves. Calhoun's, it's a taste of Tennessee, the taste of Tennessee, and you can take it with you. That taste goes with you wherever you want. Calhoun's, give them a shot. All right, um, Phil Steele was with Josh Ward this week on Sports 180 with you and Will West. Uh, you also put it on your podcast. Um, Phil Steele, of course, known for being a college football guru, does a uh, tremendous guide every year that's just heaven for analytics and stat geeks like myself. Uh, does good stuff, but I thought he had some interesting quotes uh, that he brought up with you. And let's go ahead and put up the, the one that I found most interesting. They only have four games this year that I would put in the pretty tough category. All happen to be in back-to-back-to-back -back -back weeks. At Georgia, at Auburn, that's in Jordan-Hare, where they've knocked off a couple of number one teams. Alabama at home, and at South Carolina, who's coming fresh off a bye. Now, he also stated that West Virginia would probably be a less than a touchdown favorite over Tennessee, and Florida would be a less than a touchdown favorite over Tennessee. To me, that makes them pretty tough. If you're an underdog <laughs> in those games, I would think that's pretty tough. I just thought it was interesting to look at this schedule as we've broken it down on previous shows this, this spring and this summer and say there's only four pretty tough games on there. I disagree with that. Is that the way you guys see it or no? No, I do not see it that way. Yeah, I would have ratcheted up, up the tough meter. I would have said yeah. that yeah. Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, those are extremely tough and then um, pretty tough to, to still really tough somewhere in that range. West Virginia with the offense it's going to have, South Carolina on the road, I do agree with Phil still. That was one of the pretty tough games. It's also that stretch of games. The way the schedule is laid out, I think, makes it pretty tough throughout. You and get I'll beat by Vanderbilt a whole lot these days. I mean, come on. Yeah, five, <laughs> five times since 2005, Vanderbilt has beaten Tennessee. And four of the past six. Four, and mm -hmm. four of the past six, you've lost to Missouri as well. So when people look at, well, Florida. I think Florida's going to be pretty tough, yeah. personally. Uh, so I, I see more than four is pretty tough. I you're, see eight or nine. Consider so what you saw last year from Tennessee, yeah. Not even, now, if you're talking about the, the 90s Tennessee team, then maybe you could say four pretty tough. This isn't the 90s Tennessee team. Yeah. I, to me, pretty tough means you'll have a tough time beating that opponent. Yeah. So I've got eight, maybe nine. A 50-50 so game is a pretty tough game. I agree. Yes. And, and I think I agree with Jimmy. I think there's eight or nine, I mean, probably nine on there that are 50-50 games at best. Yeah, you've got your three patsies in your non-conference games, and I think, you, again, as I said in the last second, you, you have a losing streak. And then you've got four non-patsies. Well, you have a losing streak against everyone in the SEC, mm -hmm. so technically everyone in the SEC is probably going to be a tough game, a toss-up. Yeah. Doesn't uh, mean you can't no. win a bunch of them, just means going in, I wouldn't say there's only four pretty tough ones. We're probably, we're probably debating semantics with him because I guess his pretty tough is what we're considering really tough. I think he's looking at pretty tough as a game that Tennessee is pretty unlikely to win. Yeah. I would include West Virginia in that category, though. I think there are at least five games, no matter how you look at this schedule, uh, that Tennessee's going to have a pretty tough time winning the rest. I can at least see the argument for the other seven being winnable, but those five I think are really tough. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say because I think he might have considered the fact that he was talking to a Knoxville audience. Yeah. Because Phil still did also say six and six to eight and four would be the range of, of positivity for Tennessee season. And he also believes that November could be a month where Tennessee needs to win out or have a really successful month. Yeah. To he even actually, go to a I think game. he actually mentioned November to remember. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, I did. Um, so we get bonus points. There haven't been many of those lately. No, not, not for the <laughs> no, right no, reasons no, anyway. No. <laughs> yeah. um, th now he also, very quickly, just to Josh on this one, I thought it was interesting. He said that he had Tennessee in sort of his top categories in terms of the players they've got coming back and the talent they've got. Wide receiver, okay. But then he said defensive line, linebacker, and defensive backfield. 
don't know that I agree on any of those points that I feel like, yeah, they are really solid here with their talent because I don't know that it's proven. What were, you, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was cut off guard by that one. Uh, wide receiver at least makes some sense with Juwan Jennings coming back. He's factoring that in in terms of personnel. That still is considered an if, by the way, and we're talking about growth from Marquez Calloway, Brandon Johnson, some of the other guys. Linebacker, you can make some sense when you factor Darren Kirkland Jr. coming back, Corte Sapp, uh, Daniel Batula, guys that were highly touted, J.J. Peterson, who's not actually on campus yet, but I can't make sense of the defensive line or the defensive backfield. And you're still counting on guys those other two positions you've heard, you mentioned first, the line and linebacker, yeah. if they're healthy. And right. some of those mm -hmm. guys have not stayed healthy. So Goes back to the ifs. So, a lot of ifs. All right. Um, when we come back, what does it take for an SEC East team to finish at 500 or better? I went back over the last four years to see, and we're going to compare those numbers to what Tennessee did last year. How much does Tennessee need to improve in certain categories? Are they capable of doing it? Going back on the sports source. <laughs> 